It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern. You know what that means. That means it is time for Benzinga Live. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I'm A.B. We've got my man David Green hanging out in the background with us. We're going to be doing some live trading with David Green. Uh, we are going to talk uh, CPI data tomorrow, see how we can maybe trade that, see what we're doing in anticipation. After Mr. Green, we will have Christian Fromhertz on from Tribeca Trade Group. After Christian, we will have Dave Matza on the, the head of product from Direction, talk some ETFs, talk some leverage ETFs, um, some fun trading tools there. Um, so pack day today on Benzinga Live. Go ahead and smash the like if you're here. Let us know in the chat what stocks you guys are watching, what crypto coins you guys are watching, what trades uh, you're thinking about putting out there. Would love to see those flying in the chat. Um, guys, let's go ahead, start the show. Bring on my man, David Green. This is Ben Zinga Live. Spencer Israel and producer AB. What's up, everybody? How are we doing? I'm Someone told me buy high, sell higher. So. Let's get Matt Hammond on the show to talk some IPOs. Jake Wujasic from Trend Spider. We have a. Girls, volume is kind Mr. of right now. What's <laughs> up, Barry? What's up, ladies and gents? <laughs> How are you doing today? All righty. Very good. Choppy action up, down, sideways. Couple yes, sir. Let me go ahead, and, go ahead and get your charts pulled up. There we go. There we go. So we're looking at we're looking at the spies right now. So you can see how choppy it was today. Nice opening. Got up to like 386. Spiked all the way down to this kind of support level down here. Now we're back in the middle of everything. Um, I would expect... Not a lot for the rest of today. Good morning, Richard. With the CPI coming out tomorrow, um, I'm not even don't have any trades set up now that we're even looking at. Um, one trade we did was this KOLD. This is the Nat Gas ETF, and you can see how it um, spiked all the way up, came down to our trend. We bought a little on our trend here, and we're up like uh, 70 cents from there. We took like 60 cents out of the trade. One of the trades that we did today, but there ain't a hell of a lot going on right now, and I don't anticipate there being. So, let's uh, talk about stocks. Let's talk. We can talk CPI tomorrow. Uh, what do you think CPI tomorrow? Let's start with that. Um, well, I mean, it sounds like everyone is kind of bracing for the worst, right? We had the the press secretary come out yesterday and say expect it to be elevated. I think the uh, Bloomberg survey estimates that I saw this morning were 8.8. .8. I'm actually going to try and I, I might get into some, you know, maybe YOLO QQQ calls or spy calls that expired tomorrow in anticipation of if we do get something lower, we could really rip. I feel like there's more alpha in trying to play the, the long side there than the short side. Yeah, I did too. I was looking at the, I always do some UVXY. Again, guys, we don't give financial advice, yada, yada, yada. Um, I always do some UVXY puts and calls when this is coming up. And um, I bought some 12 puts. So I'm kind of in your camp. Um, if it's any better than expected, I think we can go a little bit. And if it's worse, maybe it's in the market already. I don't know. Anyway, we do some lotteries. I bought some 12 puts thinking that the market will be up. And I bought a, a little bit of a 15 call. So that's how I'm playing the volatility for tomorrow using the UVXY with some options. You know, we don't invest a lot. I think I invested 100 bucks total in those things yeah and, and i mean i was talking about this earlier yesterday on the show i don't think that if we do get lower than expected cpi it means okay then we're gonna have powell come out and the fed's gonna change its course no the fed is going to be uh it, you know they, they are very dedicated to their goal of low rate inflation but i think it will it will if we do get a lower than expected cpi it will allow wall street investors to say okay maybe then we're a little bit closer to the fed looking at everything and saying okay, we don't need to do, you know, 100 basis point hikes or anything crazy like that. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think, you know, 50 or 75 is baked into their next meeting, right? And most likely 75, I would think. Um, yeah. Let's see. Tom Barkin speaking at 1230 to Richmond Fred president. All right. And we'll go to our daily chart in the spiders just to get a sense as to where we are. And we're in nowhere's land, guys, right? We're right in the middle of this whole thing. We had a nice rally off the lows. We couldn't get above our little trend line here. And here we are. You know, it's just, it's really just guess time as far as trying to pick a direction we're going in from here. So there's no real 
support or resistance anywhere that I'm looking at now. I guess, you know, if we can get above this, let me see what that is. Let's call it 389. We tested that. We couldn't get above it. Pulled back to this trend line. Now we're hanging on this trend line right here. So I guess 389 would be bullish if we can get above that. Then we got room to like 401. Downside, you know, you guys who were with us for a while, we picked the bottom here and right around 363. I don't know if it's the bottom, but it certainly was a short-term bottom, right? That was our weekly chart. It happened four weeks ago. We were waiting for that for a long time. That was a 200 EMA on a weekly chart. So, you know, that was a very big support level, and we held it. So this is a weekly chart. Again, we're in no way's land. Weekly, we need above 392, right around 392 to try and reverse this. I mean, we haven't gotten above this trend line, you know, since 440. So, you know, we'd have to get above 392 to really reverse this little downtrend, then 401 and then 416. 416, guys, is the level that, you know, we can really get going from there if we get above that. But again, there's still a lot of stuff going on other than CPI that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, we still got Russia to deal with. You know, China's on lockdown again. Um, yeah, so, so just talking about the big catalyst we have moving forward. In the short term, we have CPI tomorrow, obviously, will we'll be a big kind of earnings. catalyst this week. And then we've got earnings, I was going to say. So we've right. got banks, banks reporting end of this week. And then uh, moving forward in the next couple of weeks, we'll have all the big guys, all the Apples, your Teslas, your Microsofts toward the end of July. That's right. Yeah, that to me is going to be what picks a dire big direction one way or another, I think. Um, you know, the expectations have come down a bunch, but I think the PE and the S&P is still like 21 or 22. We'll, we'll take that for whatever it's worth, but that's going to go a long way towards determining our next big move, either up or down. And, you know, some of these stocks, how much of that is priced in already, right? We've seen stocks like NVIDIA and AMD and even Apple to a certain extent. You know, these things have just been, I'm just going daily and I'll, I'll even go weekly in NVIDIA, right? I mean, stocks down from $360. And this was another one, guys. Weekly chart, we hit our 200 EMA. Uh, last week, right around 144, and you can see we got to bounce off that. So, look, we'll keep our fingers crossed that they at least meet or exceed expectations. And the forward guidance is going to be everything, right? It's not even so much what the number is going to be. It's it's what they're going to talk about. Um, is anyone else getting some weird audio feedback? I'm not. I'm good. Aaron, you good? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if it's just on my headphones or if it's coming through or not. I thought it was just on my headphones, but it, it might be coming through. So I might have you reset your your microphone headset or something. Yeah, I'm good. Everything's good here. Um, so, you know, we'll see what they're going to say going forward. I'm sure they're all going to talk down expectations, as they should, but that's going to be it. So this is going to be a big month, right? Uh, earnings will give us a clue as to what the next big move is going to be. How is uh, how many people we have with us, Aaron? We have right now a little over two hundred. All right, good. So, guys, how has your trading been going for you guys? Those of you who have been actively trading, you know, I say this every time I come on. It has not been an easy market to trade. Um, we're seeing moves that used to take two weeks happen in ten minutes sometimes. Um, so, let us know, guys. Let us know how you're doing, and if there's anything that can help you with technically or anything else while we're here for the little bit that we're here. Talk to us, right? You guys know everything that I do is based on technical analysis and our moving averages and our pivot points. I don't make any trades unless my technical analysis tells me to do so. But it has been a difficult market. Anyone who says it hasn't been is probably just lying to you, right? Yeah, and, and, and you know, you're doing okay, good. Slow because I just take my setups. So that's it. Excellent. So, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me right now is just um, staying patient because, like we were talking about, like I, I think the next big directional move will be coming from earnings, which won't be for the next, you know, for another week or two. And it's like, till then, what are we going to do? Are we just going to chop till then until we get these earnings coming out? And then, how, you know, am I going to try to trade the chop or am I just going to? Yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. So, you know, tomorrow will give us some kind of wackadoodle move. One way or the other, maybe. Who knows? If it comes in in line, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And again, I am not proactive. I'm reactive, right? So 
we wait for things to happen. And then when we have our levels, we spring into action. I really don't care whether the market goes up or down in the short term. Obviously, we always care. We want it to go up in the long term. Um, all right. A couple of things I see here that we're looking at. My thoughts on Dick Sporting Goods. Let's take a look at the chart. And anytime I look at a chart, I want to go right to the daily. And we'll see where we are. All right, so this is a little bit constructive in Dix, right? We just got above 86.60. That's a daily resistance level. That's good. Coming up to the weekly, which is 87.74. So if we can clear like 88 in Dix, that puts us into the little gap with room up to 95. So it's trying. It looks like a lot of other stocks. You know, we got to bump up above like 88, I would say, and you got to gap up to 95. What's up, Easy Mike? You know, all the technical analysis in the world, though, can, uh, goes out the window when we get these two, three, four percent moves during the day at any moment, right? It's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, gas has come way, way down. We actually caught a little trade in UCO last week. I was on vacation last week. Um, and I'll show you this one it came down. I think it was weekly chart. Let's see. What we, yeah, check that out, guys. So this is a weekly chart of oil, right? And we went from $55 right to our 65 EMA on a weekly chart at 32.50. I actually was on a cruise last week and I sent out an alert to all our guys to grab a little down at that 32.50, 32.60 level. And it gave a six, $7 um, bounce off that. So to me, yeah, it's all about being patient. Look, I had to wait to a weekly level in oil, you know, down from 55 to 32, but it was a really good setup when we got down there. Gas prices are highest in June. I've only come down this month. Like sinking. Well, that's it. You know, CPI is, is we're looking backwards. So, yeah, I don't see how it could be good when we had the oil prices that were extremely high and have just come down in the last month or so. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we're not expecting a bad number, but people are smart enough to also say, OK, we know gas sizes with there. It's probably going to be a little better than what it shows because, you know, gases and oil have come down from there. Yeah, and that's what I think. I mean, l looking at the CPI that we're going to get tomorrow, it's like for the first week or two of June, we had rising gas prices. But then for the back half of June, we had falling gas prices. So the question is just, where, where, was the rising gas prices enough to offset the fall-in or vice versa? And and really, I mean, we're not going to know until we get the, the CPI data tomorrow. That's it, 100%. So we're looking at the spies right now, guys. We're pulling in nicely here. We were just at 385.30. So we got a couple moving averages down at 383.30. Guys, let's put a little order out. We'll buy a little spiders if we get down to our 65 and 200. That'll be straight down $2. I think we get a little bounce off there. So what is it? 383.35. Let's put a little bit out there. Cancel the video too. We ain't getting up to that level. I'll explain to you guys why we're uh, doing what we're doing. So I'm going to put 100 shares out. 383.31. So we're looking at the spies coming in a little bit and just tested our 30 EMA. I'm just being conservative. You know, we got a little bounce off this 30 at like 380, 390. You can see we're bouncing a little bit. But if we break through that and get down to here, I think we'll get a nice bounce off that level. So that's why we put our order out down here. I have been more patient than ever in all of my trades. Sometimes I'm skipping some of the setups that I have and going for lower levels. And if I miss a trade, I miss a trade. It's just... Um, pays to be a little more patient here so we got a little order out down there 380 330 is good we'll see if the spiders can spike all the way up down there and get a trade set up for you guys traders started buying tlt two days ago let's see where we are yes they did right we bottomed out three days ago around 112 so here we are again in tlt right in the middle of everything 117.32 would be a spot that I would look in a sh to sh be short initially. That's our 65 EMA. Food and gas, most important elements. Of yeah, exactly right. That's exactly right. Over 8.8. .8. Well, what's expected tomorrow, Adam? Do, uh, Alex, do we even know? Let's take a look. Let me look. 8.8, 8. 8. 8, I believe, is. Or wow. That's what I saw was the Bloomberg survey estimate. Let's see what Market Watch says. Guys, whenever I'm looking for the. Uh, news that's coming out during the day i go to market watch and go to economic calendar right here and this will tell us everything that's coming out 
for the week, really. So let's see, Monday, Tuesday, there we go. 8.8, yes. The previous 8.6, though, expecting it to tick up a little bit. Yeah, and I, I, I see, especially if I am going to get into some of those YOLO calls that expire tomorrow, I, I don't mind them putting the expectations a little higher because then even if we get, say, 8.6 again or whatever, it's okay, we, we're, we're, we're okay. And I, I don't know. I mean, I'd be surprised to see it much higher than, uh, you know, 8.8, .8, but we'll see. I mean, it sounds like a lot of people are expecting it to be higher. Yeah, I mean, look, so if it comes out like 10, you know, the market probably tanks. And if it comes out certainly to 8.6 or lower, we're probably okay for a little bit of a rally. We got the beige book at two o'clock. I'm just trying to see nothing else for the rest of the week. So again, you know, hold on to your hats tomorrow morning. And I told you guys the way I'm playing it. Like again, I think we invested like a hundred dollars. Put some calls and we'll see what happens. Um, can I look at Tesla? Yeah, we can look at Tesla. Let's take a look at Tesla. We were just talking about Tesla a couple of minutes ago, guys. Okay. And someone in my room pointed out the 200 EMA around 707. Check that out. So here are the stock, guys. And again, technicals went from 686 to 707. That's our 200 EMA. All right. That is the strongest moving average that we have. And from 707, the stock went down $9. Here's your short. Okay. And in Tesla, if we make a trade, I'm looking to make between, you know, 3 and $5. But it went down $9, could not get above our 200 EMA, right? And there's your trade. Now we're kind of bouncing off support a little bit. But that was a beautiful short up at 707 for almost a $9 trade. Um, for you guys who want to know, um, I'll give you the technical analysis that we use. We use five moving averages, a 9, a 15, a 30, a 65, and 200. Those are the moving averages that we use. That's what I determine what, when I'm making trades or not. And then we have our pivot points. But let's take a little uh, bigger look at Tesla. So here's a daily chart. Again, kind of looks like most charts we're looking at. It's just a mess, right? 770, which we almost got to, right? Didn't get too far away from that. And we're kind of trying to hang on support here. And let's go weekly. And weekly, it's in a downtrend like most other things, you know, Really got to clear like 815 to get above all this stuff. They got earnings. When are their earnings? Let's say the 20th. Yeah, so eight days of earnings are coming out. My next support on a weekly chart is 523 if the earnings come out and they're really, really horrible. So keep an eye on it. Again, with Tesla before earnings, if you're going to do anything, do options. You don't do anything but options in that stock. Otherwise, you're just totally gambling. Hit the like. David is awesome. Can't go up every day easy to dollar, that is. Nah, I mean, look, in this market, and I've had some people come to my room recently that just started trading and tell me, um, oh, you know, I don't use technical analysis. I just buy something if I think it's okay, and I short something if I think it's okay. Well, in this market, you're not going to last very long doing that. I can tell you that right now. Crowd stock getting well. Let's look at crowd stock. Wow, this is down 14 bucks from this morning. So check this out, though, right? Look at CrowdStrike this morning, and it hit our pivot point right there at one. Let's just call it 190. So when stocks go up and hit our pivot points or moving averages, that's resistance. Look what this stock has done. Still looks horrible. It's in a downtrend all day. We'll take a little longer look if you guys want. So 175.50 is a little support. So where are we? We're kind of sitting on that right now. A little bit above it. And then again, if the market gets really bad, we got to get down to that uh, 154. GameStop above the daily 200. Yeah, GameStop and uh, AMC have been acting good for the last couple of days. Yeah, now it's down like 40-something points, right, Jay? Yeah, so that's why that's down too. Yeah, GameStop is starting to perk up and AMC is starting to perk up a little. You know, GameStop, if you look, first time we got up to this 136 level, big rejection. Here we are back at this 136 level. Let's go weekly. And weekly was starting to get a little above. Let's go monthly. Wow. This is a huge level in GameStop. Between 136 and 140, above 140. And I think it could be off to the races in GameStop. So looking a lot better, GameStop. So even though, you know, it's a meme stock or whatever, AMC, same thing. 
So above 140, we like GameStop up there. Yes. All yeah. Right. Even a little closer if you want. And again, we're at a big level right here. Let me show you again. 136, right? We're at right now. Right there. We're just trying to climb above it on the daily. Weekly, we just got above it on the weekly. And monthly, yeah, Look, if we get above 140, exactly, we got the nothing but clear skies above that. This is splitting, right, soon also? Yeah, I think they, they announced Fourth the one split on the 22nd. Okay. So this is going to be like, what, a $40 stock, $35 stock? Yeah, so, all right. Yeah, 140, above 140, and I think we're in the clear. In GameStop for a little bit. A lot of room above that. Uh, just taking day setups. Boeing, yeah, Boeing had their delivery numbers today. I think something like that. It's been strong all day. So you know, check out Boeing, right? Right from the get go. This is one hundred and thirty seven dollars. Holy cow! Yep, this is up ten bucks today, and I think it opened up a little. So first real chance to buy it was here around one forty three when it pulled back to a trend line, and that has just been gorgeous all day. And I think we're clearing some big levels. Oh, here we go, guys. We're coming to one right now. 146.80 is daily. And well, oh, let's see. Let's see how this reacts right around here, guys. 146.80 is a huge level in Boeing. Check this out. There's your daily chart. Okay. We are sitting right on that 200, the 65 EMA. So let's see what we got above here. 148.80. Big level here, and then 148.80. They have earnings coming out soon too, right? Yeah, all this month. I mean, I'm inclined to short this if we get near 149 for a trade, especially today. So that would be a gigantic move. But again, above 149, we got room to 165 in Boeing. So definitely healthier. We're sitting right on the daily, exactly 146.80, and then the next level is 149. So stocks like this, you know, you got to be thinking buy. I think we tried we actually we had a bad trade in this this morning. We tried shorting it when it got up here. Got really stretched out. And then we start tried to short it around 14150 and just got stopped out for 50 cents. But when you see stocks like this guys, don't think short, think long. I mean, this is just an incredible incredible trend trade. So, how about how about Apple today, David having a, yep. a pretty decent day with uh, you know, the Qs are still I'm looking at the Qs right now, still slightly down in the red, but Apple's up about 1.5%. Yeah, I'm just going to check the Qs first. Yep, Boeing's at the 65 daily, Mac. Yeah, so keep your eyes on it here. If it gets above here, it's really good, and if it can't it could be a, a little bit of a short. And then 149. Yeah, the Qs are kind of flat. And Apple's much better than the Qs. Right? Apple, 147.50, 148. So let's see where we are daily in Apple. Nah, again, a lot of these stocks are looking the same, right? Sitting on a daily 65 right now. Let's just call it 148. Weekly, 148. Monthly, 148. So there's another one. We clear 148. We got room to at least 152. And you can see the hesitation we had there, right? Now it's first time up there at that 148. Yeah, we rejected off that level, came down. Correct. Yep. So we'll see. So GameStop at very big levels, Boeing at very big levels. And you see how Boeing had a little trouble at that, right? What we say, 146.80 almost got there, had a little bit of trouble. I sold Boeing at 420. Wow, nice job, Mike. Nice job. Yeah, if we look at Boeing on a monthly, $446. Well, that was before the planes and all that stuff, right? But look, this isn't much different from any of those charts that we're looking at in some of these big name stocks, right? Boeing, Netflix, a lot of them got crushed like this. So a couple of stocks at very big levels to keep your eyes on, guys. Now you see how Boeing almost got there, got rejected at that level. Apple got rejected at that 148 level. How about GameStop? What are we doing here? Man, GameStop's kind of hanging. So a lot of things we can be, look, if the market gets good, these things that we talked about, uh, I'll have a lot of room on the upside. We'll see. Tomorrow I think so we'll go too. I just, way. like I said, like there's just to me, like if I was going to play the, the inflation print tomorrow, I feel like there's more 
upside to playing uh to playing uh, the uh, you know for an uptick I agree, for a I agree. run. That's how I played it. I'm more bullish than bearish. The way I, and again, you know, if the spiders get crushed somewhere because of tomorrow, we'll just look to trade it. But I'm I'm more bullish than bearish going into it. Yeah, Microsoft very very weak today, right? I don't know why either. There's got to be a reason. I mean. This is another stock. We tried. We lost money on this trade today too. We tried buying Microsoft right here around two sixty, on our pivot point, down five dollars, and we very quickly got stopped out of that. So you know the thing that we're doing right now is when we're wrong, we're getting out. Period. And you know just taking our profits when we can get them. But yeah, Microsoft very very bad today. This thing hasn't rallied. It's been in a downtrend all day. Let's see where we are daily. That does not look good. Weekly. That does not look good. Monthly, you know, we bounce off this 248 level a couple times, so we'll see. Boyle's making a double bottom. Hold on, guys. Wow. How's the cold doing off that trend? So look at this cold, guys, from $29 up $1.70 off that trend line. Very, very nice. Mike, try, I stopped trying to figure out what makes sense and doesn't make sense in this market about seven months ago. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it's tough if you're going to be doing that, right? Yeah, exactly. No, there is no rhyme. If you're trying, if you're trying to, if you're trying to make sense of everything that's happened in these markets, you're going to get, uh, you know, paralysis by analysis, where you're just sitting there not making any moves. Exactly right. That's why, to me, it's all about technical analysis. That's it. There's nothing else you can go by, right? A lot of things don't make sense in this market. <laughs> Period. Yeah, and I mean, that's why, like, something with, like, the jobs number that came out last Friday, we were talking about it before, and I was like, I don't know if it, if a good jobs number is good for stocks or if a bad number is good because that means the Fed's going to want to cut. You know, it's like you, you don't even know if a good number is good or a bad number is bad. Right, you don't. You don't, and you just have to, like I said, you can't be proactive. you got to be reactive. you just got to trade when it comes out. If you're trying to guess, and the only thing I would ever do, like you said, you buy some options. You know you, you know your risk. When you're buying an option and you want to invest, you know, a couple of hundred bucks and try to hit a home run in something, that's the way to do it. But you want to take a position in any stocks going into these things? No way. Absolutely not. You can't. You can't. You'll get wiped out doing that. Uh, someone said we want to look at gold. Uh, boil double bottom, guys. Yeah, I like that if we spike down to 45.76. Absolutely, 100%. P cars coming in. Let me take a look real quick. All right. So P car 8080. Again, this guy's this whole move is a dollar that we're looking at in P car, right? So I would wait until we got down to like 8040 in P car. That's good. The 260 EMA. Microsoft DG plus the section on section on that news. Okay. Uh someone said they want to look at gold. We'll look at GLD. Gold is so boring. Who wants to look at gold? Who said that? Let's take a look at the chart. Ah, it's been horrible lately, right? I know. And and this is that this is a time period where you would expect gold to do well, right? There's so much uncertainty with inflation. Equities aren't doing well. Bonds aren't doing well. You'd think uh, you know, people would be rushing to gold right now. <laughs> What's up, Tiny Pine Media? D Green927. That's me. Well, look, we got a level of 200 EMA coming up in gold at 158.24. So that's a little number to write down, guys. 158.24 should be a nice resist uh, support level on a weekly chart. And then 152 is your monthly. Well, okay, but even then, uh, so say we're getting down to this level and I want to trade it. I don't know how I would trade it, David, because I'm not going to go buy options on GLD. It doesn't move enough. Like I would just buy some common, put out a limit order right there at 159 and, and hope it gets a few bucks. That's it. That's the only way you can play it. Yes. 100%. I mean, are there options in it? I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, actually, there are. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, there are. So that could be another way to play it. You know, so let's say you'd have to go out a little bit. And let's say it gets to that 158 level. You know, you, what is that? Yeah, you could buy some 160, 162, 163s, right? Or a cheaper way to do it, yeah, is the GDX, the gold miners, because it kind of mirrors that right yeah there you go so let's see if we have anything in this i don't have any levels but another way to do it if gold hits that 158 level i'd buy some gdx 
the cheaper this thing is down from $42, trading at 26. So that's how I'd look at it, Aaron. If gold hit that level, I'd be looking to buy a little GDX. It's cheaper. So that's what I would look at. Thank you for that, James, by the way. Um, let's see. Catching up with the chat real quick. Let me know in the chat what stocks you guys are watching. If there's any trades you're looking to put out, we'll only have David with us for a few more minutes. So ask now or forever hold your peace. DH, DH, exactly. why, do you, why do you use exponential versus regular? Um, I found that exponential are a little more conservative, DH. Things have to move a little further to get to the exp exponential. So that's why we use it. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Labu, biotechs. All right, let's talk about biotechs for a couple of minutes. This Labu had a huge run. Some of my people in this um, Labu, they had an average price of like five bucks and it had this huge run up, right? So where are we now? Yeah, I mean, look, this is another one. We get above 970. That's a huge breakout in this thing in Labu. So 970 is your spot on a weekly. And then, you know, it's got a lot of room above that. So here we go. Right, and it tested it. Check it out, guys. It got to 976, rejected, down to 8. So 976 is a gigantic level in Labu to get above. And, you know, look at this thing down from whatever it is, $40, $50. Now we're kind of going flat. So, yeah, above 976 is really good in that one, guys. So you can keep your eyes on that. And I think they have options in that, too. Maybe not because it's an ETF, but let me look. Let's take a pike. Yeah, they do. There you go. So, you know, you can go out a month or two in these things if it breaks out above that 972 level. And you can buy 11s, 12s, 13s for really, really cheap. So keep your eyes on that, guys. Big level, 972 in uh, Labu. Yes, yes, yes. High volume in Boeing. Let's take a look what's going on in Boeing. Yeah, it looks like we got some people wanting to check out Neo and Twitter as well. All right, so Boeing, guys, we just broke above that daily level. Right, got above 146.75. So next spot is 149, guys. You think the top is in in Boeing? We don't think. So you want to short it here? It's just breaking out on a daily. But I tell you where I want to short it if it gets there, especially today, is our weekly 148.95. I really like that. So let's put an order out there. Cancel our spy. That ain't happening. Order cancel. Boeing, let's call it 148.90, guys. I like that. I'd be a little aggressive up there. Plus, it'll be really stretched. But I like that up there. Mackie, I don't know. Are you shorting it? Someone in my room is just saying that I think that Boeing top is in. We don't try not to think, guys, because thinking gets you in trouble. <laughs> All right, what else we got? I thought what we say a couple of neos. Al, did someone yeah, we, we we had we had a neo and we had a Twitter. I don't know how much Twitter is moving now with this, with the the lawsuit or court case about to start or whatever. But yeah, and again, neos right in the middle of everything, guys. Kind of just sitting here. You know, Twenty was a big support level. I, I see nothing in neo at these levels. It's right in the middle of everything. Twitter, and you know, Twitter's going to trade with Muskie. What are you going to do? This is going to this is going to drag out for a long time, though, no, Alex. They're going to be in court. It, it, it's just going to take a long time. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. Any any kind of thing in this, I it's not getting bought for fifty four dollars. I can tell you that right now. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll and see. I don't see anyone else coming in and buying Twitter. It's just going to take, I mean, it's going to be such a pain, I feel like, for both parties with legal fees and all this, so. You know, I'm not ignoring the chat, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to see everything. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Google splitting, right, soon? Yeah, it should be. Any That's going to be great, man. Right? I think we're going, where are we splitting? Uh, so, wow, this is happening Friday, guys. Friday, Google is split it 20 for one. So what does that mean? This is going to be like a hundred dollar stock. Yeah. 120 bucks or something like that. Wow. That's going to be great for us guys. That's going to be spectacular. I love it. And they got their earnings coming out shortly after that. 
So this might be an opportunity. I'll certainly look at the um, earnings are coming out when on the 26th. Yeah, I'll look at options in that after this splits and gets really cheap. I like that. I like that a lot. Yep, then we can all trade it at least. GameStop to the moon. Hold your horses. I right, see you guys. So check that out, man. Check out GameStop, guys. This is what happens when stocks clear these little levels. Look at that, guys. 136 was the level. Daily, weekly, monthly, and look what happened. Boom. Got above this level that was a big resistance level, and we're up $2.50 while we're sitting here. Right? That's crazy. Perfect, perfect. All right, so... Guys, look at my chart for everybody here. Look at my chart in uh, GameStop, and especially everybody in my room. Where are we short in GameStop for a trade, guys? See if anyone in the chat can figure this one out. Look at my chart. Look at my support and resistance levels. And I'm going to put an order in where it's telling me to short it, which is, for those of you who aren't familiar, 141.20. 141.20 would be $5 away from our moving average. That would be getting really stretched out there, and we will get a pullback from there. About a 90% chance that we'll get a pullback from there. The reason we use all the technical analysis, guys, is because when stocks hit these levels, it's putting the odds in our favor. Okay, we're looking at the Boeing daily, weekly level. Again, it doesn't, doesn't always work, but at least we're not throwing darts on the board, right? Yes, next level is 141.23. Excellent. Yes, yes. Good job, Paul. Yeah, AMC, again, AMC and GameStop have been acting much better lately. AMC, I yeah. think I should play with options. They were they were very not interesting for a while, and now they've yeah, gotten interesting exactly. again. Yep. So AMC, if we look at our daily, about 1450 was the level in that. Okay, uh, shout out Paul Bond. Uh, James's brother and Jordan in the chat for, for paying attention, getting those 141. Yeah, nice, guys. Yeah. So, guys, I'm, I'm telling you what will help you, right? And you don't have to be with me, whatever it is. But put those moving averages into your charts that I talked about. 9, 15, 30, 65, and 200. Put them into your charts. It will show you when trends are forming, and it will show you when stocks are getting really stretched out. It will be a gigantor help for you guys, right? Gigantor. And look, guys, anybody who's here, um, uh, Alex will post my email, dgreen927 at yahoo.com. Yep. And you, guys, you guys can come hang out with me for five days in a room and watch us trade live. Anybody who's here, just send me an email. You come in, you hang out with us for five days. I'll really get you uh, all your charts set up and stuff, and you can trade live with us. I see a USO. But put those in your charts, guys, if you're day trading. It'll really help you. Okay? Yeah, USO is down with UCO and everything else, right? So, again, UCO, here's a level, guys. 69.60 is the first level on our daily chart. We'll go weekly. 69.80. So, now we have two levels at that 69.60, 69.80. And monthly, then we're down to, well, let's go weekly. 65. So two levels to watch, 69.80 and 65 in USO. I really like 65 if we get down to that level, down from 90, right? 65 and 200, P. 9, 15, 30, 65, 200. And pivot points. Again, if you guys come into the room, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get those things set up. And NVIDIA. Well, NVIDIA might be in a little uptrend now, right? I will right, we'll keep our eyes on the video. You know, if it holds us 152.20, it could be okay. Yeah, they were downstairs, uh, My first buy would be 150.150 in the video. That would be down from 153.50. It's our 65 EMA. Matter of fact, we'll put a little order out there. GameStop reverse, so that's not going to happen. Boeing. Kind of hanging. That's probably not going to happen either. Yeah, you guys got it. Perfect, perfect, perfect.
Um, let me go ahead and get that email popped up there on the screen. Dgreen927 at yahoo.com. Yeah, guys, you send me an email. I'll get you in there today. All right. SMH has room. Well, that's the semiconductors, right? Yep. Yeah. Let's see where we are in the daily in that one, too. Again, you know, 207.50, we got to get above before I think we can really blast off. 207.50, that's a daily levels. Some trades we like, SMH, XFB, IBB. I hear you. I hear you. Look, we need the market to cooperate, right? Right, Aaron? I mean, for all these things to work out, we need the market yes, to cooperate with us. Yes, sir. Right. I know. And it's it's just like, like, like we've been saying, it's just so impossible right now to kind of look at the landscape and be able to try to pick a direction um, to where the market's going. Because it'll be, you know, the market, it'll, it'll, it'll have a trend for three days and then decide, okay, that's not the trend anymore. Let's throw that out. And then we're, we're going to have a new trend. Um, but I'm really... I mean, I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again today. I'm. I actually did already start scaling into some. Uh, I just got some cheap QQQ calls that expire tomorrow, David. Which one? I got two ninety threes for uh, about a buck thirty. So they're pretty flat right now. I think one twenty eight right now. Okay, buck thirty um, for the two ninety threes that expire tomorrow. But what I'm more interested in is waiting till like. 3 50 p.m and then looking at the at them and saying okay uh here's where you know you really get the lottery tickets when you have you know basically zero time it's basically Correct. a zero date to expiration buying them right this afternoon and then who knows if we get 8.1 instead of 8.6 and the queues open up two percent tomorrow i make 300 percent. you know no, no question about it yep so for you guys who don't know and the, the options right um, this is what Aaron did. He bought the 293 call. Expires tomorrow. Here's your expiration date. Okay. Here's the call. And you can see it's trading $1.32, $1.35, $1.32, dollar $1.35. Yeah, so if we wake, wake up tomorrow and this thing's trading at 293 these things are going to be $354 early in the morning. So that's what he's talking about, you know, getting a double or a triple off of those if we get a big bounce in the morning. And as he said, it pays to look at these at like 3.30. Right. Yeah, and the and uh, I'm looking at these knowing that there's probably a more likely chance to not they're they're worthless tomorrow. You know, it's just a little gamble. It's like okay, I'll spend three, four hundred bucks on these contracts if they work out. Great. That's exactly right. It's a small investment to potentially get a huge gain. And look, who knows? By the end of this day, what if these are one sixty, one seventy? You take a little profit already. Yeah, exactly. I mean, right now I'm looking at it right now. They're they're a buck forty three right now. So the ones that I got at one thirty, I'm already up uh, eleven. I'm up eleven percent. So it's That's like, yeah, if I wanted to take a little eleven percent gain, but I, I'm not. I didn't buy buy these for for eleven percent. I bought them for a lottery ticket. So we'll see. Exactly. Look, if this spiked up to two dollars by the end of the day, you have to take some profits. <laughs> true. True. Although I didn't buy that many contracts, unfortunately, so it's, yeah, it makes even it hard. if you bought two, you take you take one off. It pays for the trade. God forbid you you know it goes to zero. You got no. You're risk. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's the way I always trade options, guys. If I get a fifty percent profit, right, I always take at least half of them off because then you almost can't lose money on the trade. So that's the way I look at it. Yeah, that's it's cool. like it's like playing a free blackjack hand at the casino. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, all right, David. Uh, let's see if we've got any more final questions. I know we've we've gone over a little bit. Don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm good. It's all good. All right. Well, let me go ahead and throw that email up on the screen one more time. Dgreen927 at yahoo.com. Make sure to go check out uh Mr. Green's chat room. Yeah, I know come hang out with us for a little bit, guys. Yeah, I know we've had a few members from uh, from Zinger Nation, from Benzinga over here, come pop over there, and they all love it. So you have no reason not to. David's very gracious and nice to offer uh, that you know that you, you can go over there and check it out. Yeah, and guys, certainly don't be intimidated. Okay, I trade fifty shares, hundred shares. A big position for me is two hundred shares. We cater to beginning trader. I have guys in my room trading ten shares and trading thousands of shares every time we do a trade. So don't uh, don't be intimidated. Okay. And we'll answer any questions that you have. Best guest so far. Thank you, Pre. Appreciate it. 
All right, Aaron, we're back in business, so I'll see you again uh, next Tuesday. Sounds good. Have a good rest of your week, Mr. Green. Thank you, guys. All right, y'all. That was David Green, dgreen927 at yahoo.com. Go shoot him an email. Check out Mr. Green, one of uh, my favorite guests that we have on this show as well. All right, let's go through some uh, what we're going to tick through for the rest of the show. In a few minutes, we will have Christian Fromhertz on from Tribeca Trade Group. See what Christian's been watching. See if Christian's planning on, uh, you know, playing that CPI inflation data tomorrow. I'll let you know how you guys how I'm playing it. I'll go ahead and uh, share my. Let's check back in on my trades because I gotta be able to. I gotta be able to multitask here. Check my trades. Talk to y'all. Uh, check the chat. See what everything's going on. Um, but yeah, so, so I've got my QQQ calls going into tomorrow. Again, this is not investment advice. And if it were, I'm telling you straight up, this is just a YOLO lottery ticket. I would not do this with any money you don't, uh, plan on using. So right now I have one, two ninety two, one two ninety three total return so far. I'm up 23%, not a big position for me. So only about 60 bucks right now, but again, I'm going to hold on to these, uh, throughout the afternoon, most likely, or like David said, I mean, if the queues shoot up, I might sell one just to take some profits. Um, but more than likely than not, I'm actually going to do the opposite and scale in and buy more of these contracts this afternoon. Cause that was kind of my whole plan anyway, was to buy toward the end of the day. Um, uh, I just ended up getting in a little bit earlier in case we do get some sort of a rally this afternoon. I wanted to be involved in that. Um, but because my original plan was to get some this afternoon, I'm still going to stick to that. And if we do rally and they're a little bit more expensive, okay, great. That, that kind of, um, it, you know, solidifies my thesis that, that we're maybe a little bit stronger in the short term here than people think. And I want to be able to, uh, really lay that out clearly that kind of, I, I think one thing that I'm able to do is see have a different strategy for like in the short term, in the medium term, and in the long term. Um, so if we're talking long term, and again, that's going to be years down the road, my strategy is basically, uh, it doesn't change. It's just kind of buy and hold in my long term accounts every two weeks when I get paid. Uh, some of that money from my paycheck goes into my Roth and I, I buy some uh, different index funds. Um, but in the medium term, I'm actually a little bearish. Like I, I think um, I, I've been outspoken on this show about not really buying into the whole doom and gloom. Oh my God, we're, we're going to see this huge crash, this 07, 08 crash, or we're going to see this dot com bubble crash. There's a lot of data out there that kind of um, goes against that, that, that the economy actually right now, it's not, I wouldn't say the strongest it's ever been. Like, so like I think President Biden said that a couple weeks ago, or someone from the White House did. I wouldn't agree with that. But I don't think we're really at risk of one of those huge 07, 08 or dot com bubble crashes. But in the medium term, um, and I'm talking about over the next month or so, I am a little more bearish on the overall market. And we'll just look at the cues right here. Um, we dipped on June 16th was kind of our low point over the last few months around 270. I wouldn't be surprised um, to see us come back down there. And I think that catalyst, again, will be the earnings reports that we get toward the end of this month. Um, but in the short term, and that's different from the medium term, I'm bullish. I think tomorrow, uh, CPI is going to come in a little less hot than expected. And everyone out there is scared right now. We had, uh, like I said earlier, the white house press secretary come out and say, expect the CPI number to be inflated. Uh, I, I don't think that that's really reason to be, you know, for me to get scared out of my trade. Um, just because to me, that's just setting that, like, that's just them setting the expectation, right. That, that, that there will not be the, uh, that don't expect, you know, CPI to come like blow, some blow away low number, but it's going to be, it's still going to be high. Yeah. Kyler, I, I did. And I, I was very outspoken about this, that I was wrong. I thought, okay, we're going to see a lower in, uh, CPI number. Cause if, if you recall going back to, uh, going back to April, from April to March, it was actually a little bit lower, and then May ticked back up again. So my thesis last month was, okay, if we do get another lower one, that will be two months in a row with inflation lower, um, and that will be, you know, the markets will see that strong. I was wrong. The, the inflation number came in higher than expected, um, and I, I think I did end up losing some money on that trade. Um, but I, I'm not going to, because that happened last month, now think, okay, we're going to see some crazy... Uh, inflation number. We were looking at the gas prices a lot over the past few weeks. So, I mean, again, 
e even today, today we're, we're now down to 465. Yesterday we were 468 a gallon. So for the first week or so of June, from say June 1st to June 10th, um, energy prices were still rising. But for the, for the majority of the month and for the second half of the month, from say June 10th to June 30th, gas prices were falling. Um, so to me, that's that's a sign. And Kyler, the uh, the the CPI that came in higher than last month, um, the the biggest drivers of that were travel costs, so like airfare tickets and, and and public transportation, and gas prices, both of which are due to oil prices and gas prices. So if we're seeing oil prices and gas prices come down for the majority of June, that to me is enough to to believe that. Even if CPI is still way elevated, even if it's way higher than anyone is comfortable with, even though four dollars and sixty cents is way higher than I'm comfortable paying for gas, or even up here in Michigan, it's four seventy-five. It's Michigan is is more expensive than than the average. Um, that's enough to where it, the the inflation it just has to it just has to not be going up for the CPI to to be lower essentially. So even though it's higher. Because it's it was not rising the same rate that it was the month before, the CPI can actually come in lower even if inflation is still high. So it's not you don't have to look at this and say, okay, inflation is still here. Of course it's still here. We're still going to be dealing with this inflation. But the question is, is it is it rising at the pace as it was? Um, and, and I'm doubling down. Uh, like like I said, Kyler, you're you're 100 right. I was wrong, and I'm doubling down this month. I'm saying we we I. Like if it comes in higher than 8.8 .8 tomorrow after this, as we've had the gas price has been falling, I mean, I'd be shocked. And then I think we're setting up for, you know, when we get July CPI in August, I think we're setting up good. Look around, there's sales everywhere. You know, Target, uh, Nike, there was a a a, uh, a big headline yesterday that I saw Nike was cutting uh, a bunch of sales on, on their shoes and or not cutting, cutting prices on a bunch of their shoes and apparel and if you go I, I honestly i think the biggest one right now is i don't think you're going to see prices at the grocery stores uh really come down as quickly as other areas like nike is going to be way quicker to uh cut prices than the grocery store um just because the, the the demand elasticity is so much higher for nike right if you're if you're have a hundred bucks less if you have a hundred bucks less this month um, because you were paying more at the pump. What are you going to be more likely to cut out of your budget, right? A new pair of shoes from Nike or the groceries you need from the grocery store? Um, advanced auto parts, Mike, you're saying it's an interesting call. We'll check out, we'll check out some advanced auto parts. Let me get over to my, uh, my trusty dusty Benzinga pro. See what's going on there. And then again, we should have uh, Christian from Hertz joining us here in a few minutes. After Christian, we will have Dave Mazza on from Direction. Uh, there were just a few other things I wanted to get to today. Um, I, I did want to talk about the uh, uh, PepsiCo. PepsiCo reported a strong quarter, raised guidance essentially. Um, so, so we will look at PepsiCo. Also want to talk about the housing market. We've seen uh, uh, Redfin is now saying that housing, basically buyers are falling through. They're canceling their contracts at a quicker rate since any time before COVID. So anytime in the past three years, essentially deals are falling through on housing markets. We will talk about the implications of that, what that can mean both for the overall housing market and also uh, how that will translate over to the equities market. Um, let's go ahead and pull up. Oh, we wanted to look at advanced auto parts. Looking at a daily chart here. Okay. I mean, my my first gut check, the first thing I've been looking at when I'm looking at charts, especially on the daily, is just looking at where we are compared to pre-COVID levels. So it looks like pre-COVID, we were about 170 for advanced auto parts, and we're, and we're still above that. We're at 185. Um which I think makes sense because just the car market in general kind of exploded during COVID. So advanced auto parts probably made more money than they were before COVID. Um, let's check the overview here. So it's still um, a little expensive, 20 PE. Uh, I mean, it's only a one price to sale, so it's really not that expensive. 
I don't know, Easy Mike. I'm going to have to do some more uh, digging into advanced auto parts and let you know if I have it any uh, if I have any conviction one way or the other. I don't really, just by looking at the chart off the top of my head, seeing anything that I, I love or hate. It does look like we, we have some really important support right here at around almost right where we're at right now, like 185. Like if we hit this level, we've hit it one, two, three times. Um, so I don't hate that right there that you have kind of a defined support level right here at, uh, it looks like right here is at 179. Um, so if you wanted to go long this, you can, you, you could put a, uh, okay. You bought at 180 easy, Mike. Um, you could put a stop loss down here and say, if we go through this support level, then you think, I mean, if we go through that support level, I think you've got some, some, a little bit to the downside. So I would, that's how I would play it right now if I were looking at this, but I know used cars sales are down. Um, so interesting for it from advanced auto parts right there. Um, is a oh, red, Redfin is public. Was Redfin a spec? No, they went public back in there. But anyway, yeah. So the Redfin data for uh, the housing markets, essentially, um, let me go ahead and get this pulled up. I know, uh, I know we covered it, so I'm just going to Google Redfin Benzinga. Go to the news tab. Yep, home buyers are backing out of sales at record levels. Um, so this is from Phil Hall. Phil is, you know, our resident kind of mortgage and housing market reporter. Um, so home buyers are back backing out of property purchase deals at a level not seen since the beginning of COVID, according to data from Redfin. Um, approximately 60,000 home purchase agreements were terminated during June, which is the equivalent of almost 15% of homes that went under contract that month. Um, that is up from about 12 and a half percent in May and about 11% in June. Um, the slowdown in housing market competition is giving home buyers room to negotiate, which is one reason more of them uh, are backing out of deals. So that's good if you're a buyer in this market, right? Cause then you can go around and, and, and say, um, Oh look, so-and-so just slashed prices. You're not going to give me a deal on that. So, We'll keep monitoring this. I think for the for the housing market in general, I think people overlook when when we're talking about the Fed, right? The Fed, we talk about them having a dual mandate all the time about unemployment and about inflation. They want to limit inflation while not crushing uh, employment numbers, not creating unemployment, uh, the unemployment numbers to rise. But the Fed is also looking at the housing market and wanting to make sure that they do what they can to avoid any kind of crash or major downturn in the housing market. And we can see that in just in the last week or so, right? We were talking about a few weeks ago, mortgage rates rising, you know, more in a month at any time in the past 30 or 40 years or something crazy. Well, now we've seen the biggest, uh, you know, kind of weekly drop off in mortgage rates. It, it, you know, mortgage rates dropped at a quicker rate than any time from since 08. So the mortgage rates, they've already kind of, you know, brought them down a little bit, trying to meet the demand um, and, and saying or, or, or that the housing market, it, you know, has cooled off. So now the mortgage rates have dropped down a little bit saying, OK, maybe we're not going to see just this huge straight out housing crash where someone that bought a house for a million dollars three months ago now can only sell it for seven hundred thousand for 30 percent less. No, it looks like with the mortgage rates coming down, there may be some demand coming back in um, and seeing that stabilize a little bit. So we'll 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 keep monitoring the housing market and seeing um, you know how that will affect everything that the Fed is doing, and then of course thus affect the equities market. Let's go ahead and bring on my man, my friend Christian Fromhurst. Let's give Mr. Fromhurst our special, very special. Uh, Benzinga guest introduction and see what Christians would watch. Mr. Fromhurst, how are you doing today? Hey, Aaron, what's going on? Not a whole lot. What's up with you? Yeah, just kind of getting ready for the uh, for the big numbers, I guess, tomorrow, which it seems like. Um, you know, pretty dramatic, I guess, at this point, it seems like everybody's kind of waiting for that. And we've also got what option X, uh, monthly option expiration this week, too. So it's a it's a complicated week. Uh, it's a complicated market to trade right now. So, uh, you know, that's kind of num number one on on the mind and, and trying not to um, 
you know, get too mixed up in this market. You know, there's uh, uh, some surprises, I think, on this tape today, too. Even, you know, software names really getting hit pretty hard today, which um, a few of them look like they were kind of ready to kind of turn the corner um, to take that next like higher. But, you know, as we're seeing in 2020, uh, 2022, you know, that this is this is a market that's kind of just riddled with, um, you know, areas that one minute are showing a little bit of relative strength and then, you know, the next minute just not able to kind of carry through. So that's kind of a few things that I'm looking at, but um, certainly some other things, too, that we can go through. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100 percent. Just and anything that's showing a trend right now, the trends don't hold. They'll, they'll hold for two or three days. <laughs> a little and, bit. Yeah, you got to be so, patient. The reverse. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been curious just how everyone's kind of playing the, the CPI numbers tomorrow, if at all, or if you're just kind of sitting on cash, sitting on your hands. I know how I'm um, playing this or, or trying to play it. So uh, let me know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, one of the things I, I well, number one, I think, you know, kind of going into the print, you know, and, and unless you've really done some major analysis um, about, about inflation, uh, you know, you, you know, you can you can certainly make make an educated guess about, you know, what, what's going to transpire. Sorry, what's going to transpire for um, for tomorrow. But, you know, it, unless you've really, you know, now uh, analyzed every little bit of what, uh, you know, CPI is and so forth, I think the best thing to do is kind of just uh, wait and be patient because, um, you know, there could be some really good opportunities. You know, I think the cues and we can go over some charts and so forth and tell you what I'm watching for the week. But, um, you know, if the number happens to come in in line with expectations or a bit higher, you know, what do you think is going to happen? You know, the market may not take too kindly to it. So that could be short term, you know, and again, it could be a short term effect. But, you know, I think may, right now with, um, as you said, you know, a few minutes ago that, you know, things are not in uptrends and, you know, you have to kind of be defensive until we kind of get that Fed pivot, um, which could come at the end of the month. Or, you know, if if the number does drop significantly tomorrow, that could, you know, for me, could give me the green light to kind of put on a little bit more risk, but not really huge, you know, in, until we really hear something different from the Fed. Yeah, and I was just talking about before you came on too the way how I see things right now, we have the short term, which I see as in the next like week. Basically, like tomorrow with CP CPIs, that's like the short term catalyst. And then in the medium term, you know, over the next month or so, we'll have more earnings. We'll have all the big guys, Apple, Microsoft, uh, whatnot, report earnings. And that could be your big medium term catalyst right. as far as the um, actual markets go in one direction or the other. Um, and then, of course, long term, you have just the long term outlook as it always is, which at least in the long term, I'm always, yeah, I'm going to keep buying uh, my equities and keep accumulating my assets and hope they appreciate over time. Yeah. And that, that's a great way to break it down, you know, depending on what your time frame is, because, you know, same thing, like long term, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I really haven't done in anything in terms of, you know, my, my longer term accounts to really kind of like, you know, and to, you know, talking about like retirement accounts and so forth, which I, I, manage as well but i really haven't done anything uh you know recently until then and i'm starting to kind of say hey I, now i want to be buying the dip a little bit for the long term right because you know if you've got that time horizon then that's long enough then you don't really care about the cpi report and right. you you probably think um you, you know or maybe you don't think but um but if you are thinking along the lines that, hey, eventually the Fed is going to stop raising interest rates, this is a cycle thing, then if you've got that, you know, year, you know, multiple year time horizon, then this could be a nice entry point for you, you know, and um, to not get bogged down into all these details that we're super focused right now, you know, unless you're trading, which is what my time frame, which is the shorter time frame, then you do have to pay attention to some of those things. A hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I have it broken down in my head where, okay, I know my game plan for CPI tomorrow. I know my game plan. If the queues come down another 10% later in the month, when we get Apple and Tesla's earnings, you know, I, I, I know my game plan for all that, but yeah, in the short term, um, uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm kind of excited for the CPI because I think either way, it'll be a very volatile day tomorrow. 
Well, the, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. And the other thing is, you know, what'll be nice too, is just to get it out of the way. Like we've, we've known since the last, you know, inflation report that came out on 630, which was the PCE deflator, that it's like, okay, the next data point, you know, that's, that's going to kind of, um, be very important is the one tomorrow. So I like when, <laughs> when we get these things out of the way and then you can make some, uh, you know, a little bit more decisions that may not be just for like two seconds, right? To say like, hey, I'm going to position in this for a little bit and I'm going to try to kind of um, be in it, you know, regardless if there's a little, if there's a few bumps, you know, in the trade and so forth. But I like trading a little bit further, um, you, you know, longer duration than what I've been doing recently. Um, what I, the most things that I'm trading, uh, you know, besides one or two positions that I've got on in my trading account, are very short duration and that's tough you know it's it that's tough to to be able to kind of consistently get the market down in the short time in the short term which is one of the hardest things to do um so you know it's a fine line between um you know getting too exposed if, if that's what you're trying to do is basically be in the market a little bit but wait for a little bit more guidance from the fed you know positive guidance from the fed um then it's 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 been tricky. It's been a tricky endeavor <laughs> to say the least, because, you know, the other thing that you mentioned is we've got earnings season too. And, you know, um, service now, which I, I didn't even notice this until uh, I guess there were some analyst notes about it today talking about how, the, you know, they might bring down their guidance a little bit. So it may not even be the, the, uh, the report itself. It may be somebody coming out with guidance that is really going to move things. So this next you know, these next couple of weeks, they're going to be filled with some surprises to the downside. And then, you know, believe it or not, you're, I think you're, you're also going to hear some success stories too, right? Really smart, good management is able to kind of uh, circumvent some of these issues that we've, that have been plaguing us, like, like the stronger dollar, like, you know, the supply chain issues and all the inflation issues. So that's going to be very interesting. And and, you, and again, you don't have to really say that you're going to, um, you know, take a lot of risk through that monitoring and, and setting yourself up for, you know, the back end of the year, I think is what's really important right now. Oh, 100 percent. I agree. I'm um, sorry. Just catching up on the chat real quick. Someone yeah. was asking, what time is the CPI release? Yes, that is 830 a.m. Eastern. So exactly an hour um, before the market opens tomorrow, we will get that CPI number. Expect to see some big movement in the futures pre-market trading there. Um, all right, let's see, Christian, what chart do we have pulled up right now? Yeah. So this is, this is the one that I'm really focused on for, for this week. Um, and this is the NASDAQ. So this is NASDAQ futures, right? So this is a weekly chart, right? So again, you know, yesterday obviously was a down day. Um, today, NAS, uh, NASDAQ Qs are, are up a little bit, but really what I'm interested in is, is how is this going to work its way through the week? So I'm looking, I think at a very important level, I'm um, using volume at price is 12,207, right? This is the valuary for the year, right? Which is based on all the volume and price action of 2021, right? So this is an important level. Um, so it, we're either going to be able to kind of get back and, and kind of turn the corner here, or we're going to get rejected again. So it's a very pivotal area. Um, and it's tough to really, you know, as we've said, as I've said a couple of times here, it's tough to really kind of say that you're going to take a big view here until you get a little bit more confirmation. Um, so that's on the weekly chart. And, and that that lines up somewhat closely, right? This 12207, right? Lines up somewhat closely with what you see on the daily chart, which is the 50 day moving average this line in here, uh, as well as the um, the top of value for the month, right? The weekly chart has the valuary for the year. The daily chart that I'm, uh, for my indicator that, that I'm using, it uses a valuary for the month, right? So that's 12,331. That would also, um, you know, if we get, if we manage to regain that level, um, that would show us that, you know, there, there's some interest in this market, perhaps by the institutions. You know, maybe it's not just short covering, but a little bit more by the dip out there from the institutions, which I think ultimately is a very important point that we need to see the institutions come back in, you know, rather than this short covering that we see every couple of weeks. Yeah, and I think that's one point that a lot of people out there right now are watching is just seeing 
uh, there is a lot of money right th- right now kind of on the sidelines, so to speak, where Definitely, a lot of institutions yeah. that have not been buying over the past, you know, six months or even a year or some, you know, so a lot of places stop buying a lot of equity, you know, just thought like, okay, we're a little overextended here. We expect there to be some sort of pullback. So a lot kind of slowed down their buying. Um, and that whenever that comes, we, we, we'll hopefully be able to see that in volume and price change. Uh, right. And that could be a signal that we've we've bottomed, that sentiment ha- has bottomed, that the bottom is behind us. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's another reason why I'm, I'm interested in, in, you know, paying attention to 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 obviously when we first start to turn, because, you know, I, I think that if we do get some positive data, whether it's tomorrow's report or if it's from the Fed at the end of the month, when you look at the overall positioning, Right. We're seeing, uh, you know, if you just look at the data that came out from the CF, CFT, uh, CFTC report, right, which they publish uh, weekly information about futures positioning. And they break that down, in, of course, into like the, what the asset managers are doing versus what the speculators are doing. And the speculators are net short S&P futures. And the asset managers have like the lowest positioning that they've had um, in several years. So, you know. Any time, so we just have to get that positive, you know, some positive information that the Fed is um, not necessarily, uh, you know, not necessarily pivoting from, you know, being going from uh, tightening to expansionary, but at least to kind of pump the brakes a bit on the tightening. That may be enough, considering that the level of positioning is is so light and is actually, you know, for the speculators, they're net short S and P futures. So that that's what makes this an interesting you know, um, time right now um, to kind of watch and pay attention and, and wait for some type of change in this market that could that could possibly get the um, get things going back to the upside. Yeah. And I remember talking about, you know, this a few months ago where just every single headline that we could possibly have was so, uh, you know, uh, bearish, like whether it was about China being completely locked down or uh, inflation, or the Russia-Ukraine war. And then like eventually, it, it, it will feel like it happens on a dime where it's like, okay, now you start to get some headlines that aren't so bad. You know, it's just like, right. it'll, it will, it'll be like rock bottom. Like everything is so bad, it could not possibly get worse. Everyone's laying people off. Uh, inflation's so bad, there's wars going on. And then it's like, oh, this company had a decent quarter. You know, and it's yeah. like, okay, like maybe things are, aren't as bad as, as we thought. Yeah, there, there's a lot of bad news out there. And one of the things that I was listening to to you just, you know, read off was, um, you know, what, about the about the housing, right? And about, um, you know, how bad that is. And, you know, it just goes to show you how tricky that this market is, right? You read all those reports that just came out about, um, you know, home builders and so forth saying that there's that there's been a, de- you know, a notable change. What do you, you know, what's one of the best performing areas of the market today? It's the home builders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just shows you how tricky this market is right now. Like the XHB ETF is up two. Per, you know, the spies right now are up twenty basis points, right? Uh, XHB is up almost two percent. ITB is up one point seven percent. So yeah, you're like, crazy. if you're thinking like you're going to respond to this news, like, oh, geez, the home, like, oh, the the housing data is horrible. Let me come in and short. You know, the the home builders, right? Uh, you know, shorts. I I think. Um, you know, it's been very difficult, I think, for the shorts, too, because of just the 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 um, the news cycle, you know, which which is always how it is, by the way. You know, the headlines don't always mean that there is a trade there, you know, but, um, you know, we haven't we, we've been kind of going back and forth. If we go back to if we look at the S&P chart, right, the, the low was made um, for now. You know, and again, I, I'm not saying that the low is in for the year, but, you know, that was back on 617. So, you know, it's it's been, a, you know, we're getting close to a month now since the market has been kind of grinding to some extent higher. So, you know, I don't think it's this has not been a, a market that's been really easy for the longs or the shorts in the last couple of months. No, I agree. And I mean, I think there have been certain setups that have set up i mean even the last like three weeks it was like the the energy trade right like if you look right. at, at chevron cvx like that one would set up for a really good short after it got extended but for a while was the only stock doing well in the market or energy was the only sector doing well so you know it's it's uh, i think like you said it's tricky for longs tricky for shorts it's important right now i think to just be nimble be quick 
and uh, be able to to really change your your th- strategy and everything like on a dime. Yeah, and, and I, I said this on Twitter. I think about a week ago, I was talking about um, you know how this is an incredible market for traders to learn. You know, not so much. Uh, you know, of course, everyone wants to make money doing this and so forth. But it's also like, you know, if you've learned a lot of lessons over this year, right, and you're, you know, you're, you're not mentally tired from what we've been seeing this year. And, and you know, both, I guess, in terms of monetarily, too, like not, not getting beaten up, but also mentally, too. You know, you got to stay fresh with this market because um, you will get good opportunities. It's a matter of time. Um, and, and time is the big thing there too. But also, you know, it's, I think it's important to kind of, you know, give yourself a pat on the back because this is a crazy difficult market right now. So this is also like, you know, so for someone who's entered the market, like in the last few years, right, this is great to kind of learn from, right, to be, to understand, you know, to be a disciplined trader, right? This market, like you, you have to be, um, <laughs> you you can't really you can't stay frustrated you know like i was coming in today looking for a couple things in like the cyberspace today and you know boom the, the bottom fell out in a couple of these things so it's like oh well all right you know you, you can't like let that discourage you um even though you've got a couple trade ideas if they don't work out okay you know move, move on and not get frustrated about it so that's important so any names, by the way, that you guys want to go over? Any charts that you guys want to go over? Um, let's let me check real quick. We do... I, I have some, you know, of course, that I can we could look at. But um... yeah, we've got we've got time for one or two. We do have to run um, a, a little bit today. Okay. So I know today we had a, a, a little bit less time than normal, but I'll, I'll work with you next week on on working out a better schedule. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can I just mention one real quick? Of course, XBI. So, so biotech. So here's a here's again the tricky thing about this market, right? You know, I think a lot of people have really kind of, you know, noticed what's been going on at this point with biotech and, and, you know, didn't make a lower, uh, you know, didn't, um, didn't make a new low when the indices were. So they were showing some really nice relative strength back in the middle of June, right? And they've been making this nice move up and we've seen much, much more participation, right? Not just the ETFs, but the single names, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you want to get over the tips of your skis with risk, right? And, you know, you know, so far, so yesterday we saw a little bit of a pullback in biotech. Today we actually went lower and we're bouncing quite nicely. But the, you know, the, the main takeaway here is I I like what's going on in biotech here. You know, I think this has a chance to kind of eventually get up to 80, 87, 88 bucks, but you want to be careful about chasing here, right? We're still in a bear market. And if you're chasing, you know, going after some of these names, skip, you know, you could chase a little bit as long as you, you know, are going to like start a position and and re- and realize when it does come in that's really when it, where you're going to put on your bigger position but you got to be careful about getting too exposed in a group that um you know got really red hot the last couple of weeks but this is actually what we want to see is these little pullbacks and we want to see these little pullbacks like today and buyers come back in so i i like what's going on here so i think it's worthwhile to pay attention yeah i mean biotech has just in general been one of the ugliest you know, performers in industry. I mean, really, if you go back and look at the XBI chart, oh, sure. you saw, no, yeah. if you zoom out on it a little bit, I mean, it's just not pretty. That eventually, right, it's got to get interesting. Eventually, it's got to get so low, it gets to a point where, look, like biotech's not going anywhere. People, there are still going to be companies out there developing drugs right. and selling, you know, so eventually it's got to get interesting. So um, I, I have not been even looking at XBI as potential investment over the past year or so, but now that you've brought it back up on my radar, maybe it's time. Yeah, I mean, it's what I try to do is really, you know, wait for it, be patient when things are in downtrends, and when things get start to get back above their fifty-day moving average and base out a little bit, then yeah, definitely it um, it gets me interested in the group and in individual names. Yeah. Um, all right, Christian. Well, where can folks find more from you? Yeah. So um, my Twitter handle is at C Fromhertz. So first initial, last name. Uh, and of course, um, the company that I run is the Tribeca Trade Group, right? You can find me just at TribecaTradeGroup.com, where I run an you know uh, all day uh, trading room and um, provide trade ideas and videos and weekend videos to um, to our members. So thanks again for having me on. I appreciate it. Beautiful. No, I, I appreciate you coming on. Always a pleasure to have you, Christian. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Uh, and, and until I see you next week, stay green. 
Sounds good. Have a great day. You do the same. All right, y'all. That was Christian Fromhertz from Tribeca Trade Group. Go ahead and give him a follow on Twitter. See Fromhertz over there. I'll drop that link in the chat. Um, all right, folks. We've only got about 10 minutes left, so let's keep the show ticking. I've got my man hanging out backstage, Dave Mazza um, from Directions. We'll be talking some ETFs with Dave. Um, let's go ahead and give Mr. Mazza our very special intro and get Dave on the show. Dave, how you doing today? Doing well. What's happening? Not a whole lot. You enjoy your uh, vacation last week? I did. Yeah, it was well needed. Um, so, but back in the saddle here, a little bit of green on the screen today, which is nice after yesterday. Yeah, I mean yesterday because we've actually the past couple of weeks, like I'm not going to say it's been great, but it's been okay. We've been like at least stopped going down. I think if you look at just the S and P 500, the the bottom at least over the past couple months was uh june 16th so definitely been going up a little bit but then yesterday like you said was just another one of those bloodbath days where it seems like you look at the screen and every single chart is, is or every single ticker is red yeah i think now what we're really seeing look we'll get into some of the activity we're seeing in our etfs is that we're it's, it's a broad-based pullback from areas that have been really performing well year to date and energy in particular uh, as oil just gets hammered and the dollar continues to be particularly resilient um, you know, today, uh, the dollar's off a bit, but like we got parity on the Euro, um, something I think most people probably didn't expect to see in their lifetimes. Um, and, and now commodities as a complex are really, are really kind of getting crushed here, uh, impacting, impacting stocks. So, uh, tomorrow's CPI is going to be particularly relevant from a data point. Then you got retail sales on Thursday and then consumer confidence on Friday. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a one, two, three punch here. Uh, of of big macro drivers, uh, especially heading into earnings season. Yeah, as well as uh, different banks that report earnings this end of the week. Yeah, exactly, and so we've already seen you know a nice uptick in volatility for in FAS and FAZ, uh, which are the bull and bear pairs for for financials. Uh, so these are products intended for uh, for for active trading um, because they're leveraged in inverse vehicles. Uh, and it's difficult to say, you know, this is such a, a pivotal earnings season um, as these banks, you know, a lot of the head the tailwinds that these banks had are becoming potentially going to become uh, headwinds, whether it's trading revenue, investment banking revenue, as deal flow has uh, has softened and really what's happening in the loan side, which mortgage rates. So, you know, I think the setup here is not particularly great um, for uh, for banks. But if we see some upside surprises, um, you know, that might actually, I, I think, help market sentiment, which, which to your point, has, has improved a bit since mid-June. Yeah, I mean, it's funny how that works, right? In mid-June, when we were at the bottom, it was the sentiment was so bad and the price changes. And then the next thing you know, oh, maybe things aren't the end of the world. Give me the uh, tickers again one, one more time on the uh, F financials. FAS. FAS is the three times bull. Okay, yeah, so you can see this one's gotten definitely beaten up from 155 down to 66. But in the past, um, just if we zoom in here, we're looking at a daily chart. You can see, yeah, I mean, we got as low in, on, in that mid-June, June 16th, I'm talking about, uh, below 60 bucks. We've had a nice little bounce so almost from, you know, mid-50s to 70 in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, no, I mean, much of that is just the fact that, yeah, it had gotten... You know, banks were financials as a group were, were, were the marketplace was viewing them a bit more favorably and then obviously got beaten up. And now a nice little bounce back here on, on some some OK volume too. you know, which uh, to, to, to my earlier point um, is is going to be a question mark kind of heading into this earnings season. And we're going to we get a lot of reporters on Friday as some companies seem to have historically moved up their um, their earnings to match. So whether it's asset managers like BlackRock, custody banks like State Street, Bank of New York Mellon. Uh, and then obviously your your regional banks with PNC and then uh, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, uh, you name it. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big day on Friday. Yeah, no, I mean the rest of this week it's just gonna be I think good for volatility in the sense that we're gonna get CPI tomorrow, which of course will move the markets pre market in the first hour of trading or so should have a lot of um, volume and volatility. And then you know like you said we've got a bunch of other catalysts this week, whether it's 
uh, you know, retail uh, shopping or, or whether it's the banks reporting earnings. So definitely a lot of, of headlines this week. And then even going forward in the next couple of weeks, we have, uh, you know, I believe that week from July 20th to July 27th, you know, we have Apple, Tesla, all the big guys to report. Um, so even though the summer July is typically a little bit slower, I think this July will actually be pretty interesting because I think everyone here is waiting. Like, is the, is is have we seen the bottom? Uh, you know, or, or is it time to buy the dip, or do we have another leg down? I think a lot of people think and expect another leg down is coming. Yeah, from from what we're seeing with sentiment. So I think as I, I've noted in pre, it's been a little bit since I was on the show, but you know, we're still seeing a ton of activity on the certain bull funds. We, we've really begun to see um, uh, activity um, come down a bit, but not markedly because people are now trading the bear funds again, to your point, as I think they are um, presuming that we may see a further leg down. That's becoming a bit of the base case here. You know, Christian was talking about biotech uh, area. You know, the volume today in Lab D, which is a, a bear fund for biotechs, and that fund is, you know, uh, down today as biotechs are up, um, you know, has, has, has increased over the last couple of weeks. So we're, we're not seeing people, pull, at least our traders, right? And these are folks who are tactical traders with the ability to monitor portfolios daily. And these tools, you know, these, are ETF, e, these ETFs are tools for active trading, have moved to the bear side, right? So you can see that spike in volume, even as, as the, the, the fund itself has laid down over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean that volume is almost doubled in from, you know, uh, back here in, in in June, and then you know right here you can see that volume has really picked up. So that's interesting to see. Correct. Yeah, you know, exactly. So that, so uh, take that as a bit of a, um, you know, a welcome sign there. That what I would you know advocate for folks who are familiar with the direction product set, look at the bear funds here, right? So you know as as it's been difficult to find a bull market on the long side these the bear funds could be tools for you whether you're thinking about trading financials into this earnings season the the, the kind of action that we're seeing now again in biotech or uh, or just generally across the tech sector yep yeah. uh so what are some other bear funds that are seeing some good volume right now um you know another fund i would point people to is web s um webs you know this is a um, fund focus on internet names um pretty steady uptick in volume there webass has had you know again these are not long-term holdings but because um the the the, the names in that in this fund have been so beaten up it, it, its chart is looking it's looking pretty powerful and its volume steadily ticked up so this is a way to either hedge portfolios that, that, that may have a lot of exposure to your microsoft's and salesforce what have you or just on you know take advantage of some of the volatility that we could see out of these names um uh look at look, going forward yeah definitely um let me see if i'm just checking the chat seeing if we've got any comments coming out here it's like all good on the questions front um so how about on the semiconductor front i know we talked about how soxl and soxs were two of your of your most heavy volume funds is that still the case yeah, look, SoxL and SoxS, um, you know, the SoxL chart, let's take a look at that. You know, it's uh, uh, it's been a bit of a rocky road here, um, but volumes have remained steady, right? I still think there's dip buyers out there on the semi side. You know, it's been difficult to be long and wrong this, but, you know, I wouldn't I would not, you know, uh, advocate trying to be a buy and a hold of these in any way, shape or form. These are your trading tools, um, but volumes really picked up as the funds continue to to kind of you know maybe find a bottom here as people have become become comfortable stepping back in. Let's flip that. Yeah, look at Sox S. This is the bear fund in the space. That's that has seen you know uh, that's a split there. Um, but again, not you know you can see the volume is 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 it's, it's actually come down a bit as its performance has been better. So we're in semis. We're still seeing traders look look look, look to the long side. Uh, even though the space now, I think, faces some well-known macro headwinds. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure you just there's less incentive too with semis being down 50 percent or whatever. People wanting to come in and short now once it's already down 50 percent. That's why you're seeing that volume come in on the long side. Is people want to play that? You know, buy that dip. Exactly. 
Um, all right, Dave. Well, we are running out of time. Um, I know we had a little bit less time today, so we'll, I'll, I'll do a better job next week getting you scheduled. But um, I know I had a couple more questions, so definitely going to write those down and get to them next week. Um, but, yeah, any, any final thoughts for us? No, I think, look, I think, like I said, look at the bull bear pairs. Um, take advantage of some of the volatility that we're seeing. Uh, and, and, and not that we haven't uh, been in the volatile environment, um, but this – starting tomorrow then heading into earnings kickoff really thursday friday going to be a lot of opportunities for trading yeah i think you're right outside i i think today you know if you're feeling bored today you're going to look back on today and think like oh man why was i uh you, you know bored by that because things are just going to be so crazy going forward the next few days the next few weeks so um dave hope hope everything goes well till till next week thank you we'll talk soon all right bye bye all right, guys, that was Dave Mazza, head of product over at Direction. Go check out some of those funds we talked about. Always fun to talk with Dave. Um, all righty, y'all. It's 1 p.m. That means it is a wrap for us today. Call that a burrito because it's a wrap. Uh, we've got Money Mitch coming up. Money Mitch got a big show. He's going to be talking to Matt Coors. Matt Core is one of our favorites here at Benzinga. He's been talking to Matt about what's going on with AMC, what's going on with GameStop, um, as well as some other big guests. He's going to be talking PepsiCo earnings. Um, so stay tuned for Money Mitch. This show will automatically redirect you to that show. You do not need to go anywhere. Please smash the like if you have not already. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Unique as a breakfast taco. All right. Love y'all. Till tomorrow, we'll be back. Stay green. I'm buying calls. I'm buying QQQ calls, not investment advice. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing.